nothing worse than feeling cooped up at home, especially after your ostomy surgery. A lot of the time you just want to get back to living your normal life and that involves visiting friends and family and of course going on holiday. Once you've recovered from your surgery, you may want to start going out and about and one tip I would suggest, uh, definitely in my case, was to try shorter trips at first, just to kind of get used to being away from home. I know in my case I was really, really nervous about being away from home, so I did a trip, uh, just a one-nighter, staying at my mum and dad's house, just to kind of get used to being away from all my comforts of home, um, and to kind of have an idea of what it's going to be like staying at someone else's house. After that I then stayed with my best friend for the first time and again it was nice to have someone that I knew um, because it just made me a bit, feel a bit more comfortable just in case something bad happened, which it didn't but it was just nice to know that there was someone I trusted there um, just in case something did happen. Once you've tried a few trips that are relatively close to home, start trying to sort of go a bit further afield. Um, but just remember, if you're going too far away that you can't just pop back home, just make sure you've got some supplies in case you know you do have to change your bag. There's a lot to be said about holidaying at home. Britain's got lots of different places to visit, and depending on the weather, it can be just as good as being abroad. Most of the travelling within the UK could be done by car, or coach, or train. One of the things I was worried about with travelling by car was that um, I thought the seatbelt would kind of rub on the bag or the stoma and damage it in some kind of way. The solution I use ever since my surgery and even to today is I will get a tiny little cushion to just put on my lap over where my bag is and then just put the seatbelt over as normal. Um, that means that I can still wear the seatbelt in the normal way but it's just got a little bit of padding so that it's not rubbing uh, on the stoma um, or sort of squishing anything in any way. As long as your doctor has cleared you for travel, there's no reason at all why you can't go abroad. You can travel by air, through the Channel Tunnel, um, ferries, whatever way you want. There's a couple of things to remember when travelling by air. First of all, no, your bag will not explode. I remember the first time I went on a plane, I was kind of nervous that I thought it would just explode with cabin pressure and all that, but it's a total myth. Nothing ever happened. I was, um, I was pleasantly surprised that I could just sit on the plane and it had no effect on my bag whatsoever. There are, however, some things that you can just do to make um, life stress-free when you're travelling by air. Um, obviously, when you're going through your um, through the security checks, you can't have things like scissors or um, liquids in your hand luggage. So um, I would suggest that if you pre-cut your bags before you take any on the flight, um, just that way you don't have to carry scissors with your hand luggage and you've got them pre-cut anyway in case you do need to change while you're in the plane. Another thing to consider is that Charter Healthcare provide a cutting service, so they will pre-cut your bags um, before they're even sent to you. So it's just a good idea, especially if you're going on a flight, that you get them pre-cut, or even if you just want to save some time and you don't have to do it yourself, you can always just get them to do it for you. Also with regards to liquids and aerosols, you can't really take them in hand luggage, so again you could swap those for wipes, so for example the adhesive remover spray that I use, I swap those for the wipe version, which is the same product, it's just in a wipe, um, and that means that I can take that on the plane. If you're going somewhere warm and sunny, just remember that you might perspire a bit more, which could mean that you need to uh, change your bag a bit more frequently, so just bear that in mind for when you're packing your supplies. You could be at a greater risk to be dehydrated, so just bear that in mind when you're going out and about and just make sure you keep on top of your water. Remember that your body won't be used to the local water supply from like the taps, so just drink bottled water instead. Also bear that in mind for ice cubes as well, because a lot of the time people will use the tap water to make ice rather than bottled water. So again, just bear that in mind when you're ordering drinks. Also remember to store your uh, supplies in a nice cool place, don't leave it in like direct sunlight. If you're going to a country where they speak a different language to you, it could be a good idea to take a travel certificate, which is basically a document that explains um, the fact that you have an ostomy, but in lots of different languages. It's good for if you need to seek medical advice, it's sort of all explained in the language that they'll be likely to speak, and it just puts your mind at ease that you can um, go abroad and you don't have to worry about trying to translate, um, you know, to talk about your condition. These are available online from most uh, associations and most of the ostomy manufacturers too. 
when packing your supplies just make sure that you have enough to cover your stay plus maybe an extra one or two in case there's any delays with the flights or um, you're sort of delayed for whatever reason um, it's just good to maybe take one or two extra because um, you'd probably rather have too many than too few. Most importantly, just remember to try and have a good time. You've most likely had lots of up and downs recently, so just take this opportunity to relax and take some time for yourself. If you're about to go on holiday, or if you've already been on holiday, tweet me and tell me all about it. Tweet at Coloplast underscore UK.